record button. So we'll record and then we'll put it up in Dennis's group, uh, hopefully a little later today for anybody that can't make it. See some folks in the chat room. Uh, Jeff, uh, hey, thanks for showing up. Jeff is actually in my course. He's got some products going. Um, and uh, it's been fun to watch the different members of my course as, they, as they've gotten products going. And um, so, yeah, let's go ahead and start. So what, what I'm going to talk about is this Alibaba to Amazon, right? How to uh, um, private label brand your own product, right, and sell it on Amazon. I think it's probably one of the best ways um, to sell on Amazon because you can control the buy box 100% of the time. You know, those of us who have done retail arbitrage or even wholesale, you know, like one of the frustrating things is, you buy something, you know, and it looks like your margins are really good. And then you get it into the Amazon warehouse and you find out there's now like 50 other sellers on it. And the margin that started out at maybe like $20 is down to $5. That's because you're sharing the buy box with, uh, with those other sellers. When you brand, you know, and you have your own private label item, you control that buy box 100% of the time. So for me, that's been exciting to transition from um, thrifting, you know, retail to be able to have that that kind of control of the buy box. So that's why I'm a big believer in, uh, in private label. You know, the typical route I think most people take when they're selling on Amazon, this is the, this is the route that I took. Started selling stuff around my house and then I went to thrifting because at that point I had more time than I had money. And so uh, I can remember like when I was thrifting, I would stand at the book aisle and I would be there for like two hours, you know, scanning books, you know, trying to find the one that hit. And the margins doing that are great, um, you know, because sometimes you would find it's kind of like treasure hunting. You know, you would find the, the big hitters, but those are usually one-off items and it can be extremely time consuming. So then I think the next thing a lot of sellers do, they move to retail. Like my first big find was at Walmart. I spent like $3,000 at Christmas time. Um, they were clearance and all their toys. And, you know, I was able, that was like my first really big buy. I think I had to go back like three or four times. I bought these humongous Barbie doll houses. I mean, they were like huge, but they were selling them for like $20. And then on Amazon, they were selling for like 140 And at that time, the, um, the overage fees, you know, for like oversized stuff was a little less. I ended up making really good money on them. But I can remember I had to make three or four trips back because I could only fit like four or five in my car at a time. But uh, that was that kind of got me hooked. I was excited. I understood, you know, that this thing, retail arbitrage is real. And there's a lot of sellers that still make a ton of money, right, doing retail arbitrage. I was just with some guys the past couple of days here at my house, uh, David Hawkins, um, Randy Reynolds. And Curtis Batdorf and Chris Bond, they all still do a lot of retail and they're doing over a million dollars a year and, and all, a lot of it in store. And so if you have the hustle, right, and you got the knowledge, you can still make a lot of money doing that. But again, it's really time consuming. And so, you know, I wanted to uh, progress where I could, uh, you know, my goal was always to be able to run the business from my house. So I, I dabbled in wholesale a little bit. I didn't have a lot of success in wholesale because I felt like the margins were so thin. And then, like I said earlier, I would have other sellers that come in on those products and it would be just like retail all over again. And if you notice, I spelled a wholesale wrong. I don't know what I was thinking there. Sounds like, looks like ho. Um, but, uh, and so, you know, the little frustration, I didn't dabble there very long. And then that's when I went into a uh, private label which for me, I think is the pinnacle of selling on Amazon, um, of basically kind of owning your product and, and building your brand. Uh, and so, you know, that's why on Friday afternoon at two o'clock, <laughs> I'm, I'm here, I'm excited to talk about this. Um, you know, when you find something that you really like, when you find something that you've had success in, for the most part, people like to talk about it. And so uh, I've been able to find a lot of success and it's meeting my goals of being able to be an Amazon seller and run my business basically from my house, which that was a huge goal for me. I homeschool my, my two kids. Um, my wife actually has a job, and so during the daytime, uh, I, I spend a lot of time with, with my kids. 
And I wanted to be able to do that without having to uh, run around to a bunch of different stores and have consistent income coming in. So that's kind of my progression. That's how I got into private label. That's why I'm a big believer in private label. And when we say private label, you know, it's really like if you're shopping at Costco and uh, I forget the name of their brand, the store brand that Costco has, but uh, you know, they have their own product. They put their own brand in. Uh, Walmart has the same thing, right? There's like Walmart branded product. Um, and when you and I, when we're talking about importing private labeling, that's basically what we're doing. We're coming up, you know, with a product that's already selling, but we're putting our own brand on it. One of the great things, right, about Amazon is they have that program, Amazon Brand Registry. I have one of my brands um, that I'm building out. I registered under the Amazon Brand Registry, and it gives me a little bit more control um, over that listing. And so, you know, if somebody jumps on my listing, now I also, on my main brand, I have about 18 separate SKUs on. Um, I pat, I mean, I trademarked my name. And so just because you private label an item, it doesn't mean that somebody else can't jump on your listing. Um, and so, because really what could happen is they could buy your product, right? Um, get it to their house, decide that it wasn't something they wanted. Maybe they didn't open it up at all. Um, and they can send it right back in if they're Amazon seller and sell on your listing. And so Amazon really has no way of knowing that. But one of the great things, like when you do find a product that you're building out and, uh, and if you go through the work of patenting your name, I've had a few people that try to jump on my listing because um, basically we're talking about generic products that anybody can buy. Well, in Amazon, there's a little uh, a place that you can hit basically and fill out a report and it, and it kind of um, it, it, it will allow Amazon to see that this seller doesn't have the rights to, to the trademark name of my brand. And so every time I've done that, they immediately remove the seller from my listing, which again, to me is the whole key of private labeling is that you control the buy box 100% of the time. Uh, so all those things right there um, that you can see, uh, the timing <clears throat> I think is perfect right now. Uh, real quick, so Chris, went to see uh, Gary Vaynerchuk. And if you follow Chris Green at all, he's a big Gary V fan. And they asked Gary V about selling on Amazon, like kind of what his thoughts were about it. And, uh, and he said, yeah, you know, if you're, this is what Gary V said. If you're just getting started out, you sell other people's stuff. You know, that's great. Um, but then, you know, he said the, the end game should be that you sell your own stuff, right, on Amazon and then on other channels, right? And hopefully eventually your own website. So I thought it was interesting that even, you know, someone as big as Gary Vee, he recognizes that having your own brand is kind of the ultimate way to sell on Amazon. Um, <clears throat> this webinar, I'm going to specifically talk about Alibaba, sourcing from Alibaba and AliExpress. They're, the majority of my product that I import and sell on Amazon, I've connected with those manufacturers from either Alibaba or AliExpress. And if you watched the news probably five or six uh, months ago, you saw the huge headlines about Alibaba blowing up for their IPO. I think they had the largest um, IPO ever. Um, and so, you know, it's a humongous company, but what they've been able to do is they've been able to take the, um, the mystery and the fear out of sourcing from a manufacturer uh, in China. And so they were able to put that website together. And uh, what used to be a little bit dangerous, um, I, when I first started, I was always scared when I sent money over to my suppliers. But they've been able to come up with some verification processes, which we'll talk about in a little bit, that have definitely made it a lot safer um, to send money to. There were some scams where you would send money, you would connect you know, with suppliers in China and think they're for real, and, you know, they would give you their address and it would just be like an empty field. So you'd be sending money and, uh, and there wasn't no factory there. But uh, thankfully, Alibaba has done some work and they've done a good job at having legitimate manufacturers advertise on their site. So let's just talk a little bit about Alibaba and AliExpress, since this is for me really the cornerstone of how I source. So if you're already selling on Amazon, you probably all have honey holes. 
you know, stores that you go to that you um, generally hit at, you know, whether it's a Walmart or Target, whether it's a liquidation store, you have favorite places to source. Well, Alibaba and AliExpress, it's just like it's another store that you can potentially source from. And um, so let's just talk a little bit about the differences of both. So Alibaba um, is a business to business company. AliExpress is more of a eBay type company. Alibaba is where I do the majority of my purchasing. It's where I connect with the majority of my manufacturers. I'm gonna just give you some very detailed steps. If you haven't sourced from Alibaba before, these are steps that you'll wanna take uh, before you purchase something from a supplier on there. When you go to the Alibaba site, there's like three check marks you always wanna check when you're trying to connect with the manufacturer. One is gold supplier, the other is assess supplier, and the third one is on-site check. Um, the gold supplier means that that company has paid Alibaba to be able to advertise on their site, and it's usually a legitimate company. My advice always is to only source from companies that have been there for three, three or more years. It's just a little, little more safer, and, um, and those companies are, are usually uh, know the processes a little better. The second one is assess supplier. That means that um, a third party has actually looked at the books. They've gone and they've, they've looked um, and made sure that the manufacturer is legitimate. So again, it's just like another filter. The third one is on-site check. That means that a third party has gone to that company, they've walked around the factory, and they've seen that it's a legitimate company. So generally, if when you're searching for a product and you check those three things, that supplier, that manufacturer you're dealing with is a legitimate manufacturer. And, you know, as I'm going through this, if anyone has questions, you know, feel free to put them in the chat as well. And we'll, I'll try to answer them as I go or, uh, or I'll try to answer them afterwards. So that's Alibaba, all right? AliExpress is a business to customer site. Think eBay. Um, this is a great site if you, you are just getting started, if you don't have a lot of capital, you can buy like one, one offs, you know, or you can buy two items. Generally on Alibaba, Alibaba you're gonna have minimum order quantities and they're gonna be larger. So you're gonna have to purchase like 200 or 300 of an item. AliExpress, very safe. Uh, every uh, person that sells on there, they have a rating kind of like eBay. You can go in and see the percentage. You can go in and see the reviews, um, you know, to see if they ship on time, uh, just see what the other customers are saying about them. I've never had an issue, and I'll say this too. So I sent uh, easily over 200,000, uh, both to AliExpress and Alibaba, and I've never lost one single penny. Everything that I've ordered has shown up when it was supposed to show up. Maybe that's not everybody's experience. That's definitely been my experience. Um, just know the difference with AliExpress is sometimes uh, the items could be factory seconds. And so if you're looking at purchasing things on there to resell, um, you know, maybe the paint is like a little faded from what it was supposed to be. Uh, just know that, that a lot of times if you're buying something on there, maybe, it's, maybe it was like an order that somebody ordered on Alibaba and they produced too many. And so they only have like 50 of the item, uh, which may be okay to sell 50, but then you may not be able to get any more from that seller. That may be all that he has. Um, and so that's kind of what AliExpress is like. But again, from, from my experience, a very safe platform to purchase from. So that's kind of uh, Alibaba and, uh, and AliExpress. So I'm going to buzz through this, all right? So again, if you have questions, please just put them, put them in the chat room. So how do I find my products? Right now, I'm averaging about $75,000 a month in gross sales. Um, you know, my percentages are similar to everyone else. They probably go from like 20 to 25% mop, uh, profit. I'm just going to kind of give you how I do it and, uh, and how I've done it for the past year and I guess about a year and six months. Um, you know, I've went from being totally retail uh, to now I'm about 95% uh, private label. So 95% of my sales is private label. 
Um, and so, you know, I guess I'll say this. So, you know, what I'm telling you is I'm just telling you my exact mindset, how, how I've been able to build my business to 75,000. My profit right now is between 15,000 and 20,000 a month. Um, and, and that's how, you know, that's what I'm doing. My goal is I want to be able to have 40 private label products that are each selling uh, about a hundred dollars a day. Um, and, uh, and that's what I want to do. Uh, you know, and generally just like retail arbitrage, you know, your products may start off very profitable, but as more sellers come in, you know, then you kind of have to move on to the next product. I'm not sure what the shelf life is yet of, of private label products. I can tell you one product that I have, uh, I've been selling right now for 15 months and my profit is the exact same, um, as it was when I first started selling, but my sales velocity has increased because I've, I basically, I'm the number one uh, ranked position, right, with this product. And, uh, and competition, thankfully, hasn't come in yet. So I'm thankful for that. And hopefully all the products that, you know, I continue to do will have that type of shelf life. So this is what I'm doing, all right? Um, basically, I only, though, sell what's already selling on Amazon. You know, a lot of times people will come to me, they'll say, hey, Andy, I got this great idea for this product, right? And the first thing I say to them is, um, is it already selling on Amazon? And if they tell me no, then I say I wouldn't try it. Um, because the reason why I choose products that are already selling is you're letting the market do the research for you. And that's what's great about Amazon with their BSR, the best seller rank. They show us there's no other website. Now, you can look at other tools that, you know, analyze eBay, um, like Terapeak, you know, and they'll show us the sales velocity and what's selling a lot. But Amazon, right, through their ranking system, they can tell us, ex we can look and see exactly what the market's pulling at. So for us, it's a no-brainer, right? You want to find what the market's pulling at, and, uh, and then you want to assess the competition decide if you can jump in on that product or not, um, and then you go for it. And so, you know, then it's just a matter of getting your product ranked. I love products that are ranked from about uh, two, I have, I have 8,000 to 12,000 here, but I like products that are about uh, probably 2,000 to 12,000 in any category. You know, the higher ones, like the 10,000 ones, I love because they're hidden. You know, you, you, you don't see those, so you don't have a lot of competition. Um, now, the way that I find those products, you can use a couple methods. You can just go to the search bar, put brackets, and we'll do this here in a second. You can do a minus sign and then just random letters, and then that's going to uh, populate, right, the different products in a category as well. So that's how I do it. I, my private label products come from the Amazon catalog, right? I want to see what's already selling and then I just want to copy it and I want to put my brand on it and then I want to do the work to get my product in search. Before though we source and we're going to go to Amazon here in a second, let's just go over my mindset of products that I don't touch, okay? I don't do any ingestibles. I don't do any health and beauty. It's probably not a very good thing if you want to import from China, right, an ingestible product or a health and beauty product. If you've been selling on Amazon for any time, you know, like already when you sell in health and beauty, it's kind of risky, even selling like name brand um, items because they could get hazmated, you know, uh, you know, sellers who their accounts have been shut down for selling sunscreen because there's one product in there that Amazon deems hazmat. So I don't do deal with any of that. No heavy or large items, right? Like refrigerators. Those are probably items you want to stay away from. You do not want to import a refrigerator. That, that would be extremely heavy and it's going to be very costly. Although I will say this, I talked to a seller. He's a, a multi-million dollar seller. You wouldn't believe this, but he imports bathtubs. He said he does it because there's limited competition. So he's going where the other sellers aren't. That's not me. He has a lot more capital than me. No trademark products, right? Like a Hershey Kiss. I live here in Hershey. You do not want to import anything, right, that is name brand from Alibaba. If you do, you're going to get in trouble. It is counterfeit and it is not real. And when you're searching on Alibaba, you'll see things with name brands on them, right? Um, manufacturers will take pictures a lot of times. 
they'll try to use them as examples. But there are some on there that will sell counterfeit items. Do not buy Nike shoes on Alibaba and think that Nike made those. They are counterfeit. You may get put in jail. You'll get in a lot of trouble. Stay away from that. No electronics. I don't want to deal with anything, right, that is costly, that could cause me a lot of returns, you know, or maybe a, a little chip inside there was turned the wrong way. Um, and, uh, and it's just, I just don't want to deal with anything like that. Same thing, no mechanical things like RC cars. You, you kind of get the idea. I want to, I want to do very low liability products. Those are the things that I want to import and that I want to sell. So let's talk about what you should look for, right? You want to look for things that are easy to ship. The best way, okay, to get your product from China, from India is by air. Um, DHL, FedEx, amazing now how quick. I'll, I'll send the order into my sales rep and three days later, I'll have that package on my doorstep from Hong Kong. Um, and so the processes are great when you airship it. And it's about as easy as ordering from Walmart. When I, when I you know, talk to my rep, which I talk to her a lot on Skype, she'll send it right away. So those are the kind of products that you want to do. Something small, uh, as, as light of, of weight as possible. We talked about that already. Uh, products that are already selling well. Obviously, if you've been selling for a while, you know that uh, the higher your ASP generally, the more profitable the product is. And so you want to try to hit, you know, a nice price point. You can sell items that are less, but uh, for me, I don't want to sell anything that is not going to make me at least $5 or more. And if it is going to only make me $5, I want to be sourced. I want to be selling those quickly. I want a high sales velocity on those. So let's just go real quickly. And I'm just going to show you how I source right on Amazon uh, if you're a veteran seller, you, you probably know this this way already, but um, but we'll just try this out here. Okay, so I already have the page. Um, what you do first is you go to kitchen and dining. Um, you know the Amazon category over here. We're in kitchen and dining, and then all I do is put two little um, two little. Uh, I can't think of those names. I'm having a brain fart. Those two things you see right there in the search bar, all right? Um, and, uh, and then I use two tools primarily. So I have a tool uh, add-on. It's called DS Domination. And what this does is it brings up the uh, rank of the item, and uh, I don't have to click on the actual item. So it's a time saver, okay? Uh, you can see right here, this is what the DS Domination does. I also use Jungle Scout, which is up here on the right. If you tap Jungle Scout, Jungle Scout is going to populate again all the information that's directly related to the products that are on this page. Now you can, um, you can sort it by any of these tabs up here. I usually sort first by the buy box seller because I want to, if, if Amazon is selling it, then I want to stay away from it. So I only want to look at sellers, right, that are FBA um, or maybe merchant fulfilled. For the most part, I don't want to sell or try to private label items that Amazon's already selling because generally they can kill you on margin. All right. So those are the two tools that I use. Uh, Jungle Scout, I believe it's now like $79 or $89 one-time fee. And then DS Domination is actually free. Uh, if you don't have those add-ons yet and you're thinking about private labeling, you want to get those. They're both Chrome extensions um, because it just speeds up the process. And then what I'll do is I'm just going to comb through these categories. And, uh, and so like right here, we're on page one. So I'm going to go to page two, right? And, uh, and I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to keep going through them. Now, here's a little trick that you can do if you're a veteran seller. Again, you already know this. If you come up here in the browser bar uh, and you type in right where it says uh, PG underscore two, if you want to type in 200 there, and then if you come over here where it says page equals two, type in 200. And this is going to get you to page 200 of your search, which is probably going to get you a little faster. All right. And then I always uh, sort by featured. So now I'm on page 200. The ranks, these are the sweet spots that I like to source in. Uh, we'll just do Jungle Scout here and we'll see what the average rank is now on this page. 
and then we'll just sort right here by rank. So right now um, we're looking at a thousand seventy nine rank, and then it goes up to twenty thousand. Uh, though the last two I probably would stay away from, but right here from nine thousand all the way down, you know, I'd be interested in looking at. Again, I did that just by coming up here to the browser bar and hitting um, two hundred. So then what I do is I basically just comb through the categories, right? Um, looking for products that are already selling. Uh, obviously, then I'll go to Camel, 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 because I want to see how long they've been selling at that rank, and I want to see how long they've been selling at the price they're at, all right? Now, I did this a little earlier, just right before uh, the webinar, and this is, this is a product that I found. 25-pack Easy Inject Jello shot syringes. All right. Um, so right here is a freebie. If anyone wants to go for this, they can go for it. This took me about five minutes to find. All right. Um, right now, the rank on these are 2,500, which is a very respectable rank. You're probably this seller, which right now there's like 14 of them that are on um, this brand right here. They're probably selling, I'm guessing, about 15 a day, probably 15 to 20 at that rank. Um, and, uh, and so, like, that, this is a product, right? That seems pretty easy. It's just in a poly bag. You get a label made. And then what I do is I go to Alibaba. Now, um, I was at the homepage. All I did was put in gel shot syringes, and this is what comes up. So right here we have one. Uh, the syringes are between two cents and 10 cents a piece. Generally when you're on Alibaba, I always go with the higher number. And, and so the syringes on the 25 pack we just saw on Amazon, they were 62 cents a piece. And here you can get syringes for 10 cents a piece. Again, the exact same thing and you can keep going down. Um, and so like this right here is a great product. Uh, if, if anyone's in the chat room, just let me know because it's a Friday afternoon and I totally understand if folks have started happy hour, uh, maybe a little early. But, uh, you know, if you're interested in private labeling uh, and you're in Dennis's group, this might be a product that I would check out. Something very simple, uh, easy to import, right? It's not going to have a lot of weight. and. Uh, and it's selling at whatever, what, what, that, what was that rank? And it's selling at 2,500, okay? Now all you have to do is come up with a creative name, right, for Jell-O shot syringes, and then you have to go through a process of launching it from, um, you know, not in the catalog, so you create your listing, then you give away promos, so anyone that's good with math, what would 25 times 0.10 be? Let me get my calculator here. 25 times 0.10. So you're basically paying 250 for that uh, 25 pack. You could probably add a dollar for shipping. So you're paying 350 and it's selling right now for 1533. And that's on a listing that has 14 sellers. So your price eventually could probably be higher than that. These sellers are all beating each other up on the price. Um, so that's it. I mean, again, it's almost like wholesale. Um, and so it's really that simple. You go through the catalog, you identify products. A lot of times what I'll do is when I'm going through the Amazon catalog and I see something like this, I'll add it to my wish list. And then I'll build up a, a, a wish list of about 10 products and then when I have that wish list built up, that's when I'll go to Alibaba and I'll start looking to see what I might be able to source those products for uh, at that price point. Um, and, uh, and then it's just a process of, of launching it, you know, and learning how to give away promos, learning how to set up promo codes right. Um, most manufacturers that I deal with in China, like this label right here, Easy Inject, Almost all the manufacturers can do that for you. And so I go to Fiverr, I'll have a logo made. Uh, I can uh, print out, you can actually print out the actual uh, Amazon barcode that you generate, you know, through the shipment creation process. Or 
uh, yeah, you generate through the shipment creation process if you're just um, creating your shipment through Seller Central. And you can send that you know, through a PDF file to your manufacturer and they can put that right on your label. And so you actually, here's the great thing, you don't even have to touch your product. And so you know, through the shipment creation process, if you choose inventory placement, all your product's gonna go to one warehouse. You just send you know, the Amazon specific labels to your manufacturer. You know, the ones that the Amazon warehouse employee is going to scan so it says whose product, you know, how many they should be looking for in these 10 boxes. Your manufacturer puts that right on the box and you don't even got to see it. You don't got to touch it. And they'll just send it right into the Amazon warehouse. That's what gets me excited about private labeling. Again, if you like retail, you like shopping, that's a great business model too. What excites me though is I want to be able to one day be, you know, travel. That's, that's a real goal of mine. I want to be able to travel with my family and I want to be able to work my Amazon account from my RV or from wherever we are in the world. Um, and by doing it that way, uh, you can do it. So Sherry, can you explain the um, barcode thing again? Yeah, so basically Sherry, when you're, if you create your shipment through Seller Central, um, you know, so you, you've, you've created a product and, uh, you know, basically like this, if you hit sell on Amazon, this, on this product page right here, it'll take you, you know, through those steps. And then, you know, when it gets to the step where it's Amazon's asking if you're going to label it, or if you want Amazon to label it, you know, if you're going to label it, then Amazon generates those, um, that UPC and typically you have those 30 up labels if you have an inkjet printer. Well, that Amazon, that F and SKU label, that's what you can send to your manufacturer. Um, now you can also, you know, when you create your product, everyone has to have a UPC, right? Most people buy them off of eBay. You can send that as well to your manufacturer. And if you don't want to uh, put the Amazon uh, F and SKU on there, your manufacturer can, can just send your product into the warehouse with just your UPC on there and you know, you co-mingle basically, but it doesn't hurt to co-mingle because you're the only one on the buy box, but you do all that through seller central. I'll probably have to do that another day, Sherry, cause I, that, that probably sounds complicated, but when you go through the shipment creation process, it's really uh, pretty easy. It's not that complicated. Um, but so that's it, you guys. Uh, right there is a product. If, if you're interested, you can research it more. I've done no research on it. So obviously you're gonna to wanna to take that to Camel, Camel, Camel or to Keepa to see what the, uh, what the rank is on something like that. Uh, but we can see again right now that's ranked at 2,500 and, uh, and there's a lot of suppliers on Alibaba that sell it there. Um, so that's it. Uh, that's kind of what I wanted to share. Uh, if anyone has any questions at all, you know, feel free. You can always just send me a PM on Facebook you can ask as well in, um, in Dennis's group. I hope all you guys appreciate his group. I know I've appreciated him so much the last six months, the encouragement that he's given to me. Uh, and I, just, I think his group is phenomenal. I was very um, honored that he asked me to help him or just to be an admin. And, uh, and one of my commitments to him is to be engaged in his group. And that's definitely what I want to do more and more. So that's kind of why I wanted to do that webinar today. So, you know, I just wanted to whet your appetite. If you're just starting out or you're not at that point yet, you know, I encourage you. I do think that this is where you want to go eventually. You know, as you build up your capital, um, you want to be able to um, private label and you want to be able to own your own brand and, and own that buy box. So it's, it, it's exciting. And, uh, and, I mean, we just have really great opportunity to do that right now. Uh, so Dennis has a question. Dennis, I'm gonna. Do you want me to unmute you here? There you go. You're unmuted. It's it's hard for me to type with one hand. It just takes a right. while. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have a question. So I I ordered some samples, five or six samples, uh, right before I had surgery. Um, two of the samples. Uh, one of them has eight listings on the same product. And the other one I think has like 14 has a lot of them. Okay. And I just, want, I just wanted to go through the process of getting samples and talking to manufacturers 
I have not placed any orders for these. Um, but how do you feel about products, you know, for, for this barbecue equipment? It's a thermometer. There's yep. 14 private label, but it's the same product. Yeah. So what, what I would do, what I always do is I assess the competition. And so whatever product I'm going to import, I want to look at every single listing, you know, that is exactly the same as my item or that is similar. And I want to see what the sales rank has been on that listing. I want to see, you know, what the history has been. And then you want to, you want to look at, you know, like what the, um, how, how is the actual product listing? Are the pages crappy? I mean, are the photos crappy? Is the, um, you know, the detail and the bullet points crappy? And then I look at how many reviews it has. And so there's a lot of folks that have private label items, but they don't go through the work of launching them right. And so when you look at them, maybe they only have one or two reviews. Uh, like those ones, I don't necessarily worry about. They're either kind of sleeping at the wheel, you know, or, or maybe they don't have the money, you know, to give away products. Because the whole key to, um, you know, getting your product to the first or second page of search is giving them away through those promo codes, you know. And, and when you do that, then you're able to uh, – um, then you're able to get to that uh, perf uh, great placement in search. Does that make sense? Yeah. So the the, um, the probably the product reviews is probably the, one of the most important. And then it gets it to the first or second page, and the rank comes in. And also with the promo codes, there it's going to lower the rank too because it's an actual purchase, but it's free. It still goes through the same cycle. Yep. Yeah. So, and that's something I've been learning more and more. Like when I first started private labeling, I wasn't as aggressive, but I definitely, as I get into it more, like when I launch my product, so I'll give away sometimes a thousand dollars in my cost of a product. But that's because, um, you know, when you, when you sell that many that quickly, it really generates and moves your product to that first or second page within those organic sales will, will take over. And a lot of sellers, you know, either they don't have the capital to do that or they're a little nervous to give away that much product. But, uh, but you and I both know Amazon sellers, they don't want to click through page after page. They want to go to that first page and find what they're looking for. Gotcha. Well, I really appreciate all this info. I yeah. really do. Hopefully everybody takes it, uh, takes it to heart and starts the process. Yep. Yep. So yeah, yeah, you guys, that's it. So I appreciate. I'm, I'm again thankful to hang out with uh, with Dennis's crew on a Friday afternoon. Uh, like I always say, if anybody is ever near Hershey, please uh, look me up, and I can get you tickets to uh, Hershey Park. So that's it. You guys have a great Friday, uh, Dennis. Thanks for having me on. Thank you. All right. We'll see everyone later. Take care. <laughs>